Today, we start off with taking a look at Vantic, a development platform for building, testing, and deploying real-time applications and creating integrations with existing systems. Uh, our engineering team today has been given a set of requirements. And so Jay has been given a set of requirements here. He's looking at what's called the system modeler. And the system modeler is the tool that's designed to allow individuals to communicate the different stakeholders in an organization, the developers, the requirements analysts, and so forth, to communicate based on event storming patterns, uh, which essentially allow them to, uh, to rapidly communicate what an event-driven or real-time system is supposed to do. And so in this particular case, you can see I've added that an IoT temperature sensor gets temperature received. There's some supplemental information to Jay who sees that um, it's received from a Vantic topic. It's going to trigger when the temperature goes over a certain threshold, in this case, 75. We mouse over it, we see additional information, and then publish that to another engineer who's going to be responsible for the collaborative activities. There are two other things he's responsible for. That's saving the last reading per device. There's some interesting caveats on that. Each device can communicate tens, hundreds of times per second. So we don't necessarily want to save that quite so rapidly and finally display it. Of course, then we'll have to go off to the testing team and the deployment team to push it out into the production environment. And we're going to do all of that in the next 15 minutes. So let's get started with these requirements. The first place that Jay goes is to the application builder. And what the application builder does is it allows it to take in streaming data and correlate it into situational awareness. In this particular case, each application starts with a default activity pattern. Activity patterns are those things that allow us to essentially be, create a no code drag and drop environment. And you can see it's simply pointed at this topic called device data. And in fact, as data comes in, we'll actually see those events in real time so we can evaluate the stream. So one of the things that you see is a simple payload showing the ID of the device, some environmental information like temperature, and humidity, a battery indicator, and of course the time that it came in. So how will Jay meet the requirements for looking at that particular threshold? Well, there's this entire tool palette over here on the left that allows him to correlate those streams of data. And the first one that he's gonna grab is this one called split by group. All of the devices are basically communicating on the same channel. And so this basically allows each device to be split back out. We just choose a unique property and that's it. And as soon as we save the application, it's immediately compiled. The next step in that requirements document, if you recall, was to basically filter out those things that are over 75. So to do that, we'll drag in a threshold. This palette of tools is all of the things that are necessary to process streaming data, and it can be actually subsidized with custom controls and custom components so that you can build up additional libraries and functionality. In this case, we're gonna do a simple threshold. If you remember from the requirements, we just wanted to know that the temperature was greater than or equal to 75. Of course, this could also be a much more complex procedure or even the results of an AI engine or AI inference data. All we care about is whether this evaluates to true or false. And in our case, we care that it's true, that the temperature is over 75, and to rule out some number of false positives over three or more consecutive readings. The last requirement that Jay had was to go ahead and publish this to another topic uh, for the alert for someone else to handle the collaborative aspects of this. And we'll use basically an action, which is to simply publish it to a topic. We configure it and we simply say that we're going to publish it to the alert topic. And that's it. Now, as we go ahead and save our application, it is immediately updated, compiled in real time. And probably in the next 60 seconds or so, you'll see it walk or drop through this threshold and we'll know that the application is functioning properly. Now, there were two other requirements on that screen. One was to save the data into data storage or keep the last reading so that somebody could monitor it on a dashboard. Well, let's take a look at what's inside of our device type right now. This is essentially just a table of all of our devices. And you can see it's just each of the device IDs and their location, but we're not storing any of the device data. All JDA has to do to complete this task is to simply save that data into the existing storage mechanism. And so we simply choose 
the name of the de, of the of the storage or table, or what we call types devices, and make sure that that's an upsert. We might also do something like a transformation. So if the data didn't come in in the same format, we might drive a transformation or something different inside there. But in our case, the data is already in the correct format. And just as a side note, you can see our threshold was crossed by one of the devices. Also, as I mentioned in the very beginning, this data might be coming in far too rapidly uh, that it would potentially create database issues or concurrency issues. We can slow that down with a pattern like limit. And again, there are a complete set of libraries for doing various kinds of stream analytics. In this case, we're only going to allow one event every five seconds through the pattern. And because it's underneath the split, it's per device. Now, as new data comes in, our data is automatically updated in real time. So if we take a look at our type again, and we look at all our records, you can see that some of the data has been filled in. And by the time we get to the end of the demonstration, all of the data for the last readings will, of course, be filled in. Our last activity was to create a graphical UI that allows various users of the application to see the device's actual data. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up what's called the Ventic Client Builder, which is a drag and drop tool that allows you to build web and mobile interactions. So here we'll just take something simple like a horizontal layout. Maybe we want to show all of the device data in a table, and maybe we'll show the location of each device inside of a map. We'll do some quick styling on it. So in this case, we'll set the height to equal the parent. We'll make it a little bit wider. And for our table, we'll drag that out as well. In Vantic, we have what are called, or inside the client builder here, we have what are called data streams. And it allows us to attach to various kinds of streams of data. And I've set one up for the devices table. So all I have to do is add my data to these various widgets. So for example, the map can be pointed at the devices stream, and we'll choose the location property for where to put the pins on the map. And we'll choose the ID for the mouse over. Similarly, we'll choose that exact same data stream here in the table, and we'll just decide what we want to show. So I'm going to show the device's ID, its temperature, its humidity. We'll show the battery level and the last time that the device communicated. And we'll make it reflect our business rules as well. We'll come into the temperature and we'll say that if it's greater than or equal to 75, the background should be red, and maybe we'll make the foreground white, make it stand out. So now Jay saves the application, and if he just tests it out real quick, we can see that we built the UI that basically shows all of our devices and, of course, the one device that's over our temperature threshold. Jay's done with his work, and now he's going to hand it off to the testing group. So Vantic also includes a testing environment so that we can make sure that the application is functioning as, as necessary. So Jay hands it off to Padma. If we go into tests, Padma opens up the test suites. Here we can perform unit tests, integration tests, or full suites of tests. Here we've got one called the temperature monitoring test, and it will utilize all the assets in this project. For the inputs, it's going to use the same data simulator that you've been seeing running in the background for the last few minutes. So it'll basically use the built-in Vantic uh, data simulator or data capture in which you can sort of simulate these real-time environments as you're building out your applications. It will expect as an output an alert on device alert temperature. We can also set things like run policies, that these should be run once a day so that we can regression test the environment. Last thing to do is to simply run the test. And as the test is running, we'll explain exactly what's going on here. So now we can see that there is a running test. It is literally taking every single component inside this Ventic application. It packages it up and it deploys it into a pristine, clean, empty environment. That way there are no additional artifacts or resources lying around and we know that the test is a clean test. This is a really difficult thing to do when you're testing out asynchronous systems. But if we drill down into the test, we can see that it is running the test it is logging each thing that the test is actually performing. So we can see the applications automatically placed in debug mode. If there are any errors, they'll show up over here in this window. If we want to, we could switch to that testing namespace. 
but assuming the test completes successfully, which it will in this case, uh, it will automatically clean up that namespace and destroy it. If there were any errors, it would leave it around, it would essentially leave it behind so that we could investigate exactly what went wrong and complete it. So now testing is complete, uh, or it will be in just a moment. Now there it is, finished successfully, and now it is handed off into the deployment team. So our deployment engineer is now responsible for taking our application and moving it to production or moving it to user acceptance testing, whatever is appropriate here. So we're going to move it into this, this environment over here. You can see it's a different namespace and you'll see that there are no assets here. Vantic also includes a deployment vehicle. So if I come into deployments and I click on the application deployment, we basically break up Vantic applications into what are called partitions. So we target specific parts of our application, for example, the application monitor, the devices table, and the client to be moved into anything tagged with the production label. I don't have to know about the physical architecture of it. I don't have to know that it exists on this system or a different system. All of that is completely abstracted from the deployment engineer. And I simply press the deploy button. In just a few moments, it is completely deployed into this runtime environment and it is in the production environment. We can see now that after deploying this application, it's actually in its complete runtime state uh, deployed into the production or the user acceptance testing area, depending on the flow that you are creating in this particular instance. So what you've just seen in the last 10 or so minutes is an entire application requirement being implemented both for streaming data, the front time, uh, the, the, the front end runtime, as well as testing and deploying the application. That was 15 minutes. Of course, if you had spent something like two weeks on an application, you could have a much more fully built uh, application that encompasses charts, mobile, web UIs, that correlates data across dozens or even hundreds or thousands of different sensors. Here in this application, we're looking at a fully built application in two weeks that take in data from weather, uh, GPS and mobile, fire detection, vision-based systems and so forth. And if that's what can be done in two weeks, imagine what your engineers could do in the next three to six months. And hopefully that gives you a good sense of what Vantic is capable of doing for providing real-time event-driven applications and integrating at the intersection of streaming systems, other applications, and the people that interact with them. I'll wrap it up.